Okay, so now hopefully you've been playing around with the rhythms and the background um, accompaniment sounds on your keyboard. And so now we're going to move over to the other side of the keyboard where the instruments are listed. So not only when you get a keyboard do you need to learn what uh, instruments are most appealing to you, but you also need to learn what instruments accompany those um, solo instruments. <laughs> so. Um, I remember when I was in high school getting ready to choose an instrument to be in the band. I wanted to be a saxophone player. So my parents take me to the local store and saxophones were way too much money. So I ended up getting a clarinet. And I am so glad I did because nowadays I'm not really much of a saxophone fan, but a lot of people are. And there's saxophones on your keyboard and clarinets and trombones and trumpets. So think about, have you ever been to a symphony or watched a symphony? Now, nowadays with YouTube and all the things that you can, you can call up, um, the best way to be an orchestrator is to watch an orchestra um, or listen to an orchestra. Uh, I listened over the years to a lot of music. I grew up on Saturday nights with my grandparents at their house while my parents went out uh, watching Lawrence Welk. So that was my initiation into a band and learning what instruments do. And I think that's what drew me to play the organ because uh, there was a guy on there that played the organ every week. And, um, and the organ has a lot of sounds and a lot of combinations. You can be the bass player with your feet and you can play with the drums and accompaniments on the organ. But most people nowadays have a keyboard. So if your keyboard has been relegated to the closet, dig it back out and let's see if we can teach you how to enjoy the sounds on that, on that keyboard. Uh, and we'll put aside right now the rhythms um, and just make it a solid keyboard. So just take the accompaniment button off and usually you'll, you'll just get the whole thing will become a piano. Uh, every keyboard that I know of, when you turn it off, turn it back on, it'll cancel out everything and it'll just be a piano. Okay, so today we're going to learn some groups. And in this book, which is the book I recommend for keyboard players or piano, anybody actually, there's two of them. This one is the, the keyboard songbook. It's called the Instant Keyboard Songbook. Uh, it has easy play. It's done by Hal Leonard. And you can see the guy on the front having a lot of fun with his keyboard. Uh, uh, but he, he's got it on a table, which I don't recommend. Get a stand and a bench. It's big note, easy play, and easy to use. Now, on every song, it says Registration Sound Program 4. So go to the back of the book, and there's a page that says Registration Sound. And they're numbered. One, two, one through ten. And I'll put this up as a PDF. Uh, buy the book because each song will have a different um, number uh, registration. Registration means sounds in uh, performers in the orchestra that get to play. Okay? So if it says number four, it's guitars. And it tells you to use an acoustic electric guitar, um, a mandolin, a dulcimer, a ukulele, or a Hawaiian guitar. So it, it actually tells you what sound to use with what song. And, and remember, it's just a suggestion. All right, but it does help keep things a little bit more organized in your mind. All right, if it's number nine, novelty, melodic percussion, uh, wah-wah trumpet, synth, a whistle, a kazoo. Oh my gosh, so many fun things to listen to. All right, so let's just, let's just start with one. Look at your, look on your keyboard and look at um, push the sound button and then go up and pick sound number one which is a piano always okay but I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna find a guitar okay um, I should have my glasses but I don't so we'll find the guitar there it is all right on the guitar how you play it and where you play it is kind of important. Oh wow, that is so cool. So I'm just playing some chords. 
So start with a, an, e, an F chord and an E. Okay, or a G. And an F. Okay, now if I go to a 12 string guitar. I have a Hawaiian guitar. See, so there's, oh my gosh, my Clavinova, which is what I'm playing on now, it's a 207. It's about 15 years old. So, um, but the song, the sounds are amazing. So I have seven, five pages of guitars uh, from a distortion to a rock guitar to a, a Hawaiian guitar, you name it, and I can do it. So I could sit here literally all afternoon and just play some guitar chords. All right, well, uh, this one's good. Now, where you play it makes a big difference in how the instrument sounds. So if you're playing a clarinet, okay, I'm gonna play, well, let's play an oboe. A bigger oboe is a bassoon. See, so uh, if I play a flute, if I play a pan flute, and the tremolos are all built in, and it's, it's just so much fun. Now here's a clarinet. If I go down an octave, it's a bass clarinet. So you have to understand what the instrument is, what octave it plays in, and what kind of song are you gonna play with it? Now, clarinet, I might do clarinet polka. Okay, or um, with an oboe, I love the oboe. Isn't that pretty? So, just take your time and there's, oh gosh, I think there's like 600 different sounds on here. Then you get to the weird ones, like Fantasia. Don't you wanna know what that sounds like? So if you're playing, there's like a little bell in there. So if you like Fantasia, write it down and keep it so you know with, that when you play that style of a song, that's the button that you want to push. All right, you could sit here for days. There's, oh, I wonder what Dark Moon sounds like. It's kind of a synthesizer sound. Now, while you're doing these, um, if you're into like the Chinese instruments or um, the Far Eastern instruments, then you want to look them up on YouTube. Just type in the name of the instrument and learn about it. Learn what, what kind of songs they play with it and, and uh, what kind of variations there are. Playing the keyboard is a whole different thing than just learning to play the piano. Playing the keyboard expands your music ability to, to be more creative. You're not gonna just sound like a piano player. All right, so it's, it's when you get tired of learning F-A-C-E and every good bird does fly, then that's when you want to move on and, and, and open up all the creative things that you can do. It's like painting, going from painting with numbers to oil painting and watercolors. Yeah, it's, and you can't do anything, you can't do it wrong. Uh, and if you like it, that's all that matters. So I have some suggestions for you. I'm going to put this as a PDF, the little registration block that tells you and on your instrument, you may have number one through 10 are different kinds of pianos. And you can have maybe number 10 through 21 different kinds of string instruments. So uh, it'll help you kind of put things in um, a block of, of re related instruments, okay? Also, if you go back to the, the lesson we did right before this on rhythms, then you'll be able to download Portable Keyboard Basics and what to do when you get a new keyboard. All right, so if you got a new keyboard in a box or you're just playing it as a piano, I think this lesson will help you a lot. Now, for, in order for you to play what you're learning, 
um, I have two books that I recommend that are on our website. One is Everything You Need to Know to Play the Piano. I wrote this book because usually you have to buy five or six different books to learn everything that's in here. And there's DVDs that you can also get with it if you like to watch it, have somebody show you instead of just read the book, which is my preference. Okay? So if you're, if you don't know a lot of things yet, like ledger notes and plain scales and chords and all of that, this book is for you. All right? Now, if you're playing on a portable keyboard and you're learning rhythms, you've got to have this book. It's my first aid chord book. You can, you can get, you can learn chords the hard way, which is in the back of this book that I recommend. There's a big old chord, chord chart that has all the chords on it with dots on it. You learn one at a time. With my book, you'll learn to play all the chords very easily and never have to have a chord chart, ever. Um, I went into someone's home the other day. They had a chord chart poster over the piano. It took up the whole wall. And it was, it was all major, minor, diminished, augmented, and different inversions. And I said, man, you need my book because you'll never, ever have to have a chord, uh, chord chart, ever. All right, so th this also um, has a DVD that comes with it. You can learn about the circle and uh, where the chords go, and it'll make your experience playing your keyboard a lot more fun if you know the chords. If you don't know chords, putting the instrument in accompaniment mode um, is not going to be as easy. Uh, you can use one finger. If it says C chord, you can play a C note, and it'll play the chord for you, but that gets kind of old eventually. So I hope you enjoy what we talked about today. I hope it motivates you. That's what it's supposed to do, to get the keyboard out and don't play it just as a piano. All right, so go to stackmusicgroup.com and, and it'll come up on the screen and uh, you'll see our catalog and the things that you can order. I have a little 17 page play by ear book. If you don't want to read music at all, you just want to play by ear uh, with a few chords, then that little book is really fun. So have fun with your keyboard and we'll see you again soon.